today, we begin with goodbye. Goodbye to shame. Goodbye to the way things used to be. Goodbye to regret and bitterness. Goodbye to apathy. Goodbye to business as usual. Goodbye to the lies that deceived us. Goodbye to whatever is holding us back. And hello to freedom in Jesus. Say hello to a second chance. Hello to a firm foundation. Say hello to mercy and new possibility. Hello to the gift of salvation. Say hello to a father who adores you. Hello to the son who redeemed us. Say hello to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, and the resurrection power within us. This is not hype or wishful thinking. This is not clever branding. This is where we find true, full forgiveness and peace beyond understanding. Welcome to a promise that never fails. Welcome to an everlasting hope. The creator of the universe is speaking. You belong here. Welcome home. Welcome to the life abundant. Welcome to your true worth. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to church. to Grace Point. If you are visiting with us today, fill out a guest card that's in front of you in the pew there. Drop it off at the um, high top table back there or in the offering plate when that goes around later. We'd love to meet you afterwards um, and give you a little gift from us. Couple announcements. Um, today, after service, um, for Pastor Appreciation, everybody is invited to lunch at Prime Sirloin in Duncansville. Everybody's welcome, so join us there after service at your own cost. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, also, if you take a look in your bulletin, there's um, some other upcoming events. I just wanna highlight a couple of them. Um, our discovery class is next Sunday. Um, Childcare is provided if you want to attend and you have children that need to be cared for while you're in the class. Um, also, King's Daughters is Thursday. And then uh, more importantly, we have our Refresh Revival Conference coming up in a couple weeks, November 12th through the 15th. So mark that in your calendars. It should be a great time. And I think we have a video for you. incredible that a gospel opportunity can fit in your hands. It's called an Operation Christmas Child shoebox, and it's filled with fun toys, hygiene items, school supplies, and a personal message. But really, it's much more than that. It's a tangible expression of God's love to introduce Jesus Christ. Churches just like this, when they pack shoeboxes, have a significant gospel impact around the world. In the beginning, people from this village, they were hard-hearted to receive the gospel. The turning point was when we distributed gift boxes. I saw a great impact. After the distribution, many of children gave their life to Jesus and started with the greatest journey. The greatest journey is so impactful because it's the word of God. I've seen Jesus putting hope upon the children. God is doing a great work. something as a pastor where your people can get involved in ministry, something that has maximum impact in the worldwide kingdom of Christ, I mean, what better thing could you do than be involved in Operation Christmas Child? To me, it's a no-brainer. I have seen firsthand how a shoebox is an opportunity and a tool that opens the door to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. These boxes open kids' hearts to the fact that there's people all over the world that 
love them and what it shows them ultimately is that there's a God that loves them. This is one of many shoebox distributions we've been doing on the nation of Kiribati. We have brought tens of thousands of shoebox gifts, and even though it's August, uh, it's Christmas for these children. Scripture tells us, go throughout all ends of the earth and bring the good news of Jesus Christ to make fishers of men. That's what we've been called to do. And that's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders and knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. Each year, around 11 million gospel opportunities are shared in over 120 countries. And more than 4 million children enroll in the greatest journey and learn to be disciples. The gospel is truly going to the ends of the earth. Your local church is having a massive impact, all because of the simple act of packing a shoebox. These shoebox gifts create an opportunity for entire congregations to fulfill the Great Commission. With every shoebox you pack, your church is empowering and training churches globally to share the gospel. This is truly the Great Commission in action. So we are collecting boxes. They are due, I, this says third week of November. We are aiming for 100 boxes. The boxes will be out in the foyer after service today. Um, these nice little labels are not here yet. Um, so when you take your box, just label it um, yourself with boy, girl in the age group of what is packed. And then we'll um, label it appropriately when we get the labels in. If you have any further questions, you can ask us while we are out there today. Um, let this be a great way to serve our community, our world. Um, I know we do this every year, and it's always a good, a good mission. Amen. Good morning. Let's stand up. Let's shake a little bit of this cold and rain off of us. Let's stand up and praise the Lord this morning.
could all come up. That's right. Kids, come up. Come on up. All right, get up here. Position yourself. Miss Holly's going to go down there so we can do it all together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everybody up here and ready? All right, let's do it. Spread out so we can see you. There. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies.
So just go sit in the front. Do I have any of my babies here? Or do we have our babies here? Come on, little ones. We're gonna cut. Everybody can sit down. We're gonna sing our song now. Okay, you ready? You ready? Come on. We're gonna sing our song now. You ready, baby? Yeah, we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me, remember? Ready? Like we did yeah. in class. Right. Got it. Okay, you ready? No. <laughs> Jesus I love me. Yes, I know. For the Bible teaches the little man still fear he can. Sing it with me. Yeah. I never learn. We are going to do a hokey pokey for Jesus. All right. Anybody who wants to do the hokey pokey, come up with us.
Amen. Amen. Don't you just love our kids and, and how, how awesome are they? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I know I'm supposed to not say anything today, but I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to Angie and all you guys. I mean, without Angie, you kind of continue. Yeah, let it be. But it was such an awesome day yesterday, and uh, I, I, we are such a blessed church, and uh, I just, I am so thankful for, for what God is doing here, and you all play a huge part of it, okay? From the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you, but uh, also, I want to encourage you. I know this is not my time to plug something, but I really feel led to say this. For our revival that's coming up in November, how many of you have just, let's be honest, let's, in church, we have to be honest, but we've had quite a few things and families that are fighting stuff that, truthfully, it, it's kind of holding us down, it's holding us back, and that is the whole purpose of this revival, this refreshing, this renewing that we're going to be having in November. So I encourage you, if you're fighting something, don't fight it on your own. Come out. Let's fight it together. Amen. And, and come here expecting, expecting a miracle, expecting your situation to turn around because God can change your situation. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. I thank you for all of those that are here today. God, I thank you for these kids that are up here, Lord. I thank you for their heart and their desire, God. And I thank you for the teachers that are investing into them each and every single week, God. Lord, help the gospel message not to come back void, but God, help them to be raised up and be the leaders that you have called them to be, Father. God, as we get ready to, to worship you, God, and, uh, Lord, I pray that you bless this offering, God, that you just... Just help it to go out and just and share the, the gospel message of hope and gospel message of truth, Father. Thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
but the, the, the things they had to go through just to get to Williamsburg. Like, they moved here, we had, we had to, they moved into a house, then they moved out of a house, and they had to stay at a hotel, and then they finally got into their house, praise God. But not only that, they were running kids back and forth from hotel to school. They've not had a chance to breathe, then they had to, something happens in Ohio, they had to go to Ohio, and then finally they're back, and then something happens here. There was constant, I said, I bet you can't wait until you can just breathe. So I finally, after five and a half months, got to have a meeting with Pastor and said, what's up? And he got to share a little bit of what he feels his desires are for our church. And what he, what I seen with them was the community. Not that they don't love us. Not that they don't care about, care about us. They care about those that don't know who Jesus is. They care about those that need to know who Jesus is. And that's where I felt his heart was at. And what can we do to reach those that don't know who the Lord is? I think he said that probably four times. What can we do? How can we reach those that are lost? How can we, how can we help? What do you need? What do you need in your youth department to help it grow? What do you need? What do the kids need? What do we need to do to help? And, and with that being said, I was like, wow, he does. He, he loves the people. And I, I don't get to hear him other than, sorry, I know, get to, I watched last week, you know, the recording. Because we're in the basement with the little ones teaching them the fruits of the Spirit and the Word of God. That's where those of us, it's not that we don't sneak out as soon as your children leave. We are actually down there trying to share with them the, the word. But last week, if you were here, raise your hand. If you were in church last week, I watched the video of the service, and I sat at my house and cried. I cried with the pastor. I felt what he was feeling. I felt what he was feeling. I felt the cry that he was crying out. And I'm like, he, he has a, the heart of a pastor. Help me, Jesus. Last Sunday, I Last Sunday, I taught I taught a lesson on the 99 sheep. I taught a lesson in Matthew chapter 18, 10 to 14. I taught a lesson to the little ones and tried to explain to them exactly what happens to the sheep. What happens when the shepherd calls calls the sheep in? And, and, and when they when they come, the sheep all come. They all come. All of them. All of them come. Do you know why? Because they have a shepherd. See the Matthew 18. Because I don't have. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think if a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away? Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go and look for that one wandering off? Listen. We are... This is us. Every one of us that are sitting here in this congregation, we are the sheep. His job is huge, and it takes it takes a, a Patty said it, it takes a tribe today. But Josh is our shepherd, and he's the one that would go out and look for that one.
Jess can pick on you. See, this is our this was our one that was gonna say it is see. You're good. This is our one sheep. And, and, and I told him, I'm like, I'll come get you. I said, I'll, I'll come get you. You did. It's all right. You did. But do you see what I'm saying? We have, you can sit down, I won't pick on you. We have a shepherd that cares so deeply about all of us that he would leave all of us here. And he'll go find that one that, that maybe nobody else sees. He'll go find that one that's hurting. He wants to find the one that's hurting so badly. Maybe the one that, that's using. Maybe the one that lost a spouse. Maybe the one that their child's so sick that they can't come to church. But what can we do to help them that they're still getting the word? That's who I see in Josh. And I'm telling you, it takes all of us standing behind Josh. Josh, this is your flock now. This is, this is them. And it doesn't matter what age they are, how young they are. You've already touched so many lives. I didn't ask anybody else to speak because I think the mic's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and it works, Steve. But this is your flock, all these age groups. It doesn't matter if they're little. I told you Carly had a surgery, and you're like, what can we do? What can we, I'm going to tell Rachel, what can we do? What can we do? And that's what you do. But you're not doing it alone. See this? These, these are our kids. These are our helpers. This is your flock, and we're all here to help you. When you call on us, I don't know how herders call their sheep. I know how my sister calls her chickens. She say, hey, girls, and your chickens come. I don't know how to call sheep, but I know that if you send out a text, you should give a shout out. You, we got your back. And we appreciate everything and all the things that you're doing for us as a church, as a whole, as a body. And I'm so excited to see, I am so excited to see what God has in store. Along with you came changes. There's been many changes that have happened already. The lights, everyone has noticed the lights, um, the podium, the table. There's been many changes. The outside, where did the table go? It doesn't matter because do you know what? With this change, Jesus is coming soon. And I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter. The changes are good. We want change. Because if we stay the same, we're not going to reach those, those that are here. And I love seeing faces that are, are maybe not as new now, but, but we have a family that came and helped us with Trunk or Treat, and they're new. But that's what it's about. I just swirled, and if anybody's tracking, I apologize. I, I'm telling you, Veronica, I got so excited that you guys that you guys came, but at the same time, I was so thrilled that Mom and Dad came. I'm telling you, God is doing a work. Y'all need to get involved. If you feel like there's nothing for you to do here at the church, see the shepherd. There's always stuff to do. There are classes to help with. Oh, we just need bodies to help do this. Tracy Douglas said to me last Sunday, he said, where did the, all these kids come from? I said, isn't it wonderful? Because when, when we stand up and we take them out, it's a herd of sheep that are going downstairs, and I couldn't be any more excited. I love the idea that we had to separate the bigger kids from the little kids. It's exciting. So with the excitement of the changes that are here, God's return is coming even faster. I'm looking forward to seeing more lost sheep. I'm looking forward to 
to seeing the church grow. I'm looking forward to us needing to separate the kids again because it's outgrown the kids department. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm telling you, I am looking forward to being a part of it because Jesus is coming soon and I can't wait to be a part of all of that. His soon coming is sooner than what we think. I hear the chats with our family members. We'll be talking about chickens one minute and the next minute we're talking about Jesus is coming soon. I really hope my family members know who he is. Jesus is coming soon. I really hope, we really need to pray, not just hope. We really need to pray and start praying more and more. Not only for them, but for us to know how to help them. So we appreciate you, Pastor Josh. We appreciate you, Rachel. And of course I appreciate all them boys. Um, Sean Michaels showed up at a trunk or treat. Come on. Yeah, he did. He did, yeah. Sean Michaels was there. It was good. Um, they're great kids. So great. I know I wasn't up here long, but I think I got what I needed to say. You've got a flock. You've got a wonderful, wonderful flock of people here. You may not have a piece of paper in your hand that has one of these pretty little sheets on it. Yeah, come on. I did that. <laughs> but you all are a part of this flock. If y'all could stand up. I'm a very visual person. I told Chelsea Sassy was going to join us today, but I decided she better stay, <laughs> stay back. Um, God is good. All the time. You may not have one of these, but as a part of our duty as, our, as sheep, we need to pray for our shepherd. Because he, while he's tending to that one, we need to be praying for him because he knows that we're all good. Do you understand my meaning of we're good? He feeds us. He takes care of us. We get the word every week. He tends to his flock. But we need to pray for him while he's out looking for that one. It's a huge job. This is bigger. I told Darren, I wonder if Josh is, Pastor Josh is nervous because I'm getting a microphone. <laughs> I told him that this morning and I said, I knew I would be. Um, but I want you to know that we appreciate you. Can you come here for one second? Let's give him a round of applause.
if you don't mind. 2 Timothy 4.2. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And you do. And I appreciate it. And thank you, Miss Rachel. See, that wasn't bad. <laughs>
to the gathering today at the restaurant, Lord. We thank you for the time of fellowship. And Father, we pray for the food, Lord. You would bless us today, Jesus. Father, you nourish our bodies, and Lord, we would uh, put things aside and we would enjoy the time together in fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. And Father, that you would protect everybody on their way home, Lord, and we would go through the week uh, reaching, reaching out to those with the word we learned today, Lord, and we would be spreading it outside these doors. And we give you all the praise to our Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You're dismissed. Oh, 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 now you're doing Wait, we... Oh, oh, oh. See, you don't tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to greet the pastor.